You know what, I love big screens as much as you do, but sometimes you just need a physical keyboard. What's going on guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and if you're coming from BlackBerry and you're migrating to Android for the first time, you know what, you don't have to get a mid-range device with a keyboard because the Samsung Captivate Glide is here for you. Now this thing has a physical QWERTY keyboard, but it's packing some pretty rocking specs. Rocking, I don't know if anybody ever says that anymore. But it's got a dual core 1 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, an 8 megapixel camera, got a pretty decent sized 4 inch display, and more. Android 2.3.5 with TouchWiz 4.0. So this is a pretty feature packed device and it may not compete with the big boys with the dual core 1.5 gigahertz processors, but it's definitely a nice little low high end device on AT&T. Let's take a look at it in the full review, but first some love to Best Buy Mobile because they hook us up with phones just like this for you during one Paul Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. They'll get all this configured for you, your email set up, your web set up, your call settings, so when you walk out the door, you're good to go and you're walking out working. Let's take a look. Coming into part two of this video, you know, this is something I don't think many people cover in their review videos. And I always like to touch base on this a little bit. Take a look at the phone application because, you know, from Android device to Android device, depending on which skin is on the phone, whether it's Sense 3.5 or TouchWiz 4 or LG's custom user interface or, heck, stock Android, the changes uh, are pretty immense depending on which platform you're coming from. So you can see the phone application here and you get four uh, tabs up here, actually five. You get logs, contacts, favorites and groups, logs would obviously be where my missed and received calls are, contacts are here as well, and you can see my phone dog Aaron test contact, for example. So we're into the contacts here, and within these, you can see, and no, that's not my real number, that's a demo phone number, just in case you were curious, but that is my real picture. I actually taken here in the office. So you can see history, activities, media, and then of course I can call and text, and then do, you know, it says there's part of my contacts, I've got a default ringtone, I work for phone dog, and I have some joined contacts as well. So it's a good look. I can see my history of when I've called or text messaged that person, activities and media, and then of course I can set that as a favorite. Who wouldn't want Phone Dog Aaron as a favorite? I mean, come on now, really? I'm just kidding, but uh, sort of, or am I? Do you know? Rick James, the Phone Dog, and then of course favorites over here, and then groups as well if you wanna group your contacts. Uh, all in one. So it's a nice little organized you know, structure. Again, I hate to keep making connections here between TouchWiz 4 and HTC Sense, but this is an area to me where Sense does do a little bit of a better job, uh, at least in personal information management. If you've seen, and this isn't a dogfight obviously, but if you've seen some of the recent Sense stuff where you can organize by email, organize by contact information, organize by text message and missed calls and activities and more, they just do a good job. Uh, across the board. That's it. I, you know, I like the aesthetics of TouchWiz a lot. I think they've done a really killer job, especially uh, in TouchWiz 4.0. Really, really huge improvement here. So let's take a look. Actually, let's jump right into camera. Now, this has an 8 megapixel shooter. What it doesn't have is 1080p HD video recording. So we'll come over here and you can see it's one of my fave, one of my fave pictures right here. And uh, so you can see an you know, 8 megapixel camera, decent picture. How do you like that picture? That's pretty, pretty awesome, right? And uh, somebody was, uh, one of the fans was texting me on this phone because I left the number in the unboxing and they were like, I'm not sure if this is a real Aaron. I was like, oh yes, this is a real Aaron. And send him that picture. So you can see <clears throat> camera quality looks pretty decent. And I'm going to back out of that and take a picture uh, of something else on the display or on the screen rather as well so you can see it live and in action. But the downside is no 1080p HD video recording. You get 720p as the highest there. And then we'll come back into camera. Let's take a picture of, you know, I'll tell you what, AT&T device on top of another AT&T device. Let's take a picture of the Titan over here and we'll take a picture. We're going to get the lock screen here so we can focus in on it and then we'll take that picture so you can see what it looks like and we'll come back out here. So you know again you're not going to win any awards but it's a pretty decent 8 megapixel shooter. You can see pretty easy to read the text there. It looks good. The Super AMOLED display does a really decent job and you can see all the text pretty easily. Colors look good so again it's not the best one on the market but for a casual point and shoot this is going to be a pretty decent device. It does a good job, although I wish that there were a, a physical camera button over there. So obviously unofficial testing. Take a look at it in store. Maybe email some pictures to yourself if uh, camera quality is of a big concern to you, but it's still it's uh, performed pretty well for me. Now my favorite quadrant standard, and you know, of course this is never indicative of day-to-day -day performance. You know, the Galaxy Nexus is pulling scores of like 1700 right now, but it performs one of the, you know, it's one of the best performing Android devices I've ever worked with. So don't take it with a grain of salt, but still it's kind of cool to say, well, my Quadrant Standard score is higher than your Quadrant Standard score if you're a nerd like I am. So we'll run this right now and I'll tell you a little bit about call quality. I've been really impressed with this device, uh, both this and the Skyrocket actually, if you're on AT&T. The call quality has been fantastic. The earpiece is nice and loud and uh, reception is great as well. You know, I've taken those to an AT&T dead spot. Uh, actually, I have both of those. 
uh, to an ATT despot at the same time, and both were able to maintain calls. That was choppy and it was hard to hear, but uh, they did a really decent job, and all my callers have told me that I sound really great too when I call as well, so that's pretty good. And uh, battery life's been, like I said, moderate. Uh, you know, it's a 1,650 milliamp hour battery with moderate use, texting, calling, things like that. I'm able to make it into the evening before uh, it requires a recharge. So with heavy use, you know, you want to carry a spare car charger or uh, maybe a spare battery. So 2,900 on the Quadrant Standard Score. Now keeping in mind that this is, you know, a high-end device, but it's definitely on the lower end of the high-end device spectrum. 2,900, definitely a respectable score. That's right up there with uh, just below some of the other, the uh, Galaxy S2 devices. That's pretty impressive. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Let's take a look at speed test as well. Again, HSPA Plus device that supports speeds up to 21 megabits per second. You're never going to see that, but let's get this to a server that's a little closer too. Let's see what we can find here. Those are uh, quite a distance. I'd like to find another bunch of servers that are local. Let's see if we can get one to pop up. If not, we'll just use that one. Or actually, we'll use Atlanta. That works. And so we'll begin the test right now. So just keep in mind again, it can range depending on a number of factors of the server, it can, you know, network traffic and more, but we'll get an idea here of what our network speeds look like. So you can see pretty decent speeds here, about three megabits per second. That's really consistent with what I've been seeing across the board with this device, between about two and five megabits per second, depending on the time of the day. But definitely, you know, impressive. It's not LTE by any means, uh, but still very, very respectable uh, in the speed department. So you get a download speed of about 3.28 megabits per second, and upload eh, about one megabit per second here. And uh, still, let's let it finish up before we give the final word. So upload, about 1.04 megabits per second. You can see the results here. That one was a little funky, but you can see 2 megabits per second. These were a little low, but uh, and I deleted the rest, I guess. But I've seen speeds between, no, it was before I uh, wiped the device. But I've seen speeds between 2 and about, uh, you know, about 5 megabits per second on the download. So that's something... Uh, yeah, keep in mind, this is not, again, not an LTE device, but still very respectable in the speed department. If speed's your thing, I think you'll be, uh, you know, you'll be relatively pleased with this. Let's take a look at the market as well. Android market, some changes, some different looks here, and we'll load it up right now. So you can see apps, music, books, and movies all in one easy to reference place, and of course they're color coded. So when you go into music, for example, you can see the shopping bag changes to orange. You can see the orange color scheme. Same thing with books, blue. But what we're going to do is go into apps. So we can take a look at that. And you can kind of see this kind of tile scheme they've got going here with some rectangles, some squares, all intended to draw your eye over to the Android market. And of course, I can scroll over here to top paid. I can see top free and see the applications. They're all organized in little, you know, little squares. So we can go in here to Pandora, for example, and take a look at it. And you have the option to share and search from the top. And then you can see I can install it. I've got my screenshots, descriptions, what's new, reviews with a nice, easy average right there. Developer, users also viewed what I installed, and market content. So a lot of different options in the Android market. It's definitely an improvement. It looks better and uh, a little bit easier, in my opinion, to use in landscape mode. And like I said, you can just scroll back and forth between top paid, top free, top grossing, top new, etc. So you've got a bunch of different options in the Android market, which is pretty cool. Now, this is one thing I don't touch on in a lot of the Samsung videos, but I want to show you Social Hub, at least try to get an idea here. You can come in here, and I'm not going to be able to set up much of this, but I wanted to show you this kind of splash screen. You can see from Social Hub, I can check all my incoming messages in SNS, so social networking status updates in one single inbox. I can get real-time email delivery, so I can sync up my Facebook, my Twitter, my text messaging, and chat with my friends in real time. I can sync my contacts and manage schedules and more. So all I have to do is come in here, set up Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I can set up my email, set up other email accounts, and it's pretty quick and pretty easy. And you can see it's aggregated here, kind of similar to uh, social feeds on BlackBerry, if you will, you know, between feeds and messages. And I can go right back into messaging and uh, quickly access all those messages. So it's a nice little touch from Samsung. It also comes with a media hub, which I can jump in here and I guess I don't have an SD card pre-installed in the device, but I can come in here and rent movies, and this kind of overlaps, if you will, over uh, Android market, but I can come in here and rent movies, rent TV shows, and watch those from Samsung's customized uh, store. So that's pretty cool, and that's a nice feature uh, as well. So all in all, you know, the Captivate Glide, honestly, one of my favorite devices on AT&T right now. I think the Skyrocket's a great choice in the LTE front, but I think if you're looking for a device with a nice keyboard, or heck, even if you're looking for a device that's just a powerhouse and does really well, it's a little bit smaller than typical 4.5 inch devices, uh, at least in terms of screen size, and you want something that's not 250 bucks, I think the Captivate Glide is a great option for you. You know, it doesn't have the highest end 720p HD display by any means, but it really holds its own. TouchWiz 4.0 is fantastic, it's a fast device, and I think, you know, even for the power hungry user, I don't think you can go wrong with this device. Much more coverage to come on phonedog.com. 
with the Samsung Captivate Glide, be on the lookout for some reviews or some dogfights rather between this device and some of the other high-end devices on the market. Maybe a Windows Phone 7 device. We'll put that to the test so you can have a look and see which one is the best. So keep it locked on the site. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're always doing giveaways. We're always on there. Hey, we're pretty cool people to talk to as well. So check us out, facebook.com slash phone dog and hit me up on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron and on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Let me know what you think of this device. You bought it, you love it, you bought it, you hate it, you bought it, you switched to something else. I'm always here to hear. I always love to hear from you. Check it out, facebook.com slash phone dog AB and phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. As always, we'll see you next time. Have a great day and stay tuned for more phone coverage on phonedog.com.